right, let's now talk about elections and how fallible they are to interference, particularly from China. Uh, let's speak to Anthony Gleese, who's a professor of politics with a special interest in intelligence-led security policies and practices. Now, Anthony, it sounds like you are the man for the job when it comes to this story. Uh, Rishi Sunak has been warned that um, a number of MPs could be targeted, that people could be trying to hack into their messages, get their private data, potentially even influence the outcome of our elections. Can you explain more? Well, this was a very senior group of parliamentarians who actually sent uh, the Prime Minister a letter about their concerns because the general election, the announcement of the general election stopped them in their tracks. They couldn't report in the way they wanted to. So they bunged it all into this letter uh, signed by Dame Margaret Beckett, of course, former Foreign Secretary and uh, former leader of the Labour Party, I think I'm right in saying. So very, very senior figure, and they're very senior figures on this committee. And basically, they are asking Rishi Sunak to be aware of the fact that our secret intelligence agencies, that's particularly MI6 here, um, MI5, uh, the National Cyber Security Centre, which is a public face of GCHQ, the Cyber Security and Intelligence Centre in Cheltenham, all these people are warning the UK that there are hostile actors out there, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. And one way or another, they all have a big influence on uh, sh trying to shape the politics of the countries that they're involved with. So Sunak's being told, we, you know, as I say, we, we, we must assume that he's heard this before, uh, he's being told to be careful and to warn MPs of the dangers. That's what this is about, whether they're uh, the dangers of espionage uh, in the, the traditional way or whether they're cyber espionage, whether they're blackmail, whether they're sex, uh, honeypot traps, all these things. Uh, MPs need to be aware during the election period of these four hostile powers wish to get their hands on our political culture. I mean, this sort of stuff's been going on since the Cold War, which arguably never even finished. Uh, but what sort of, I mean, it might be hard to say, but what sort of outcome do you think some of these ne'er-do-wells want? Are they lobbying or trying to move things around to get a particular party in power because they think the policies might be more favourable to their ends? Are they just trying to wreak havoc? Are they trying to sort of essentially get certain politicians in or out of power because they might find them more controllable? I mean, it's pretty alarming that we certainly seen in recent months particular incidents of MPs who have gone on to online dating websites and sort of found themselves, like you said, the sort of honey traps, uh, victims of um, being able to be sort of controlled and blackmailed by people who don't have our best intentions at heart. Well, Alex, I think you ask a very important question. And if I had a criticism of Dame Margaret Beckett's letter to Rishi Sunak, it would be that she she spells out the areas in which people should be careful, but she doesn't in any way differentiate between the, the, the different wishes uh, that the hostile actors have. So she doesn't say that where the Russians are concerned, what they're interested in, indeed all they're interested in really is in chaos. They don't support a particular party. Yes, they don't want Britain to carry on supporting brave President Zelensky and the courageous Ukrainian people. They don't want that. But whether it's Starmer or Sunak or, you know, Ed Davey, they couldn't care less. The Chinese, on the other hand, they're not interested in chaos in the United Kingdom. Uh, indeed, they, they would much rather have a stable United Kingdom. What they're interested in is old fashioned spying, sex, uh, infiltrating their agents who could be British, British people who may have studied in China or gone to China after university, infiltrating them into the corridors of power and getting them to pass on information, as well as, you know, cyber hacking is, is possible the Chinese do it. But they want two entirely different things. As for the Iranians, what they want to do is to undermine our foreign policy uh, processes and above all, are kind of muted support for Israel in Israel's fight against Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, the Houthis, 
all of which are well-known <laughs> Iranian front organizations. So if, if, if you were an, a would-be MP now standing for parliament, you would need to be mindful not just of people inviting you to sleazy nightclubs <laughs> and to see gorgeous girls say you're the most wonderful thing they've ever come across. You'd also need to listen for clicks on your phone and you would also need to be aware of misinformation and disinformation. Mm. Disinformation is lying. Misinformation is spreading lies without realizing their lies. And there's social media. And, and many people, you know, Boris Johnson's written the Daily Mail uh, that Sir Keir Starmer uh, protected or failed to prosecute uh, the paedophile Jimmy Savile, for example. Now, that's been repeatedly denied, and I'm assured is untrue. But that is the sort of thing you get on social media and be, oh, you know, that Keir Starmer, uh, we, we can't trust him. So a whole panoply of mm. threats people need to be very aware of. Anthony, uh, do you know, I want to ask you something. You're talking about, you know, politicians having their phones tapped and uh, people trying to steal information. I've got a little anecdote for you, actually. Back uh, in 2015, when I was uh, a certain Mr Farage's right-hand woman, I used to walk to our then offices and uh, I would get off the tube at Green Park and I'd always be listening to some sort of nice motivational music in my earphones. And as soon as I came above ground from the tube station, just calls and calls and calls coming in. Very busy period of my life. And I used to find that when I had finished a call, which you know I'd also take in my earphones, rather than it play the music, I could hear my own footsteps echoing back into my ears. And someone said to me, that, dear Alex, is a sign that someone's listening in. Is that right? Well, it, it could be. Uh, what we always say is, if you can hear a click or a noise in your phone or you feel you've been recorded, which is what it sounds like to me, Alec. One thing you can be sure of, it's not MI5, <laughs> because our people are so good at it, you wouldn't know they were listening in. And if you were using a mobile phone, they would go in a completely different w uh, way to, to doing that. Um, and that's what our people at Cheltenham are, are very good at doing. Always lawfully, of course. And I think they would say, too, that Nigel Farage, whatever you think of him, and I've debated with him more than once, uh, whatever you think of him, he, he, is a, he is a Democrat and he's using democratic freedoms to put his point of view. Uh, we're talking about people who aren't Democrats. Mm. We're talking about authoritarian dictators who have secret police forces, lock people up, torture people. And, and you know, in the case of Iran, torture women in particular. So it, 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 if you were being spied upon, which is perfectly possible, given your closeness to Nigel Farage, that would be a sign that it was a hostile intelligence agency after you, not mm. our own people. So Probably could... blimmin' Angela Merkel, I bet. <laughs> it um... could be, you know, reassuring for you in, in one way, but upsetting for you in the other. But of course, it does raise the question, what are you meant to do about it? What, what can you do right. to protect it? Yeah. I, I, do you know, interestingly, that's not the first attack on young Alex's freedom and privacy. Oh, no, because I received an email from PERS, P-E-R-S, which is a department in the, the European Parliament who deal with employment. It's basically their HR unit. Anyway, they emailed me going, there's been a massive hack on our systems and your data has been stolen. Sorry about that, love. They've just sent me another email the other day and they're able to put down, they've actually listed the data of mine that has been stolen from back when I was an MEP. And it's things like my passport, um, my then address, my date of birth, my name, so on and so forth. Uh, well, fine, my passport has changed since then. I've got one of the nice Brexit blue ones these days. Um, but, you know, uh, th there's European elections coming up. One assumes that that is, again, an act of a hostile state, trying to get as much information as, of, as possible of people connected to the European Parliament. Absolutely. And that, again, is a Chinese interest. The Chinese want to know everything about everything. And they would love to know your details. And they'll want to know things that don't immediately have any security or uh, you know, any, any real purpose at the time. They, the way they reason this is that one day, uh, when push comes to shove, it might be important to know exactly about Alex Phillips and whose right-hand woman she was at a particular point in time, whether it's to blackmail you or to find out what Nigel Farage was really thinking about a, a particular point. So that's not what the Russians want. What the Russians want 
is on the one hand to sow disinformation and spread misinformation, but also, and very worryingly in, in my um, opinion, they're also beginning to carry out acts of sabotage in the United Kingdom. Well, I was going to be careful about this because it's some judice, but there is some evidence to suggest that Russian military intelligence was behind the firebombing of a Ukrainian-owned warehouse in London, for example, and other acts of sabotage also in Europe. And of course, they're very interested in Europe. Uh, you and I, Alex, may disagree on Brexit, but I think we can both agree that we became weaker after Brexit and the Europeans became weaker after Brexit. And that's what the Russians like. The Chinese don't want the European Union to be weak. They want to do business with it. The Russians want the European Union to be weak because they don't want the European Union to admit Ukraine. They don't want the Europeans to give Ukrainians weapons. So, as I say, the, the Margaret, Dame Margaret Beckett's letter to Rishi Sunak was, was good in general terms, but it didn't make it clear mm. that it's not just one problem, it's several problems. And what yeah. they also said in this letter, you know, Sunak's a given MP £31 million to try and keep them safe. What that means, I suppose, is more uh, intelligence-led officials inside Parliament keeping track of approaches to MPs and other things that the government promised it would do uh, to, to counter misinformation and disinformation mm. it actually hasn't done strong on promises but not good when it comes <laughs> strong to on promises <laughs> weak on delivery i couldn't agree Familiar with you more story. on that one familiar we, story i'm afraid but we, putting yeah. people and putting our democracy at risk we, we 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 definitely agree on the strong on promises weak on delivery we don't agree on the whole brexit thing because i actually think you know when we uh, jumped in and gave our uh, aid and, and resources to ukraine we were the first out of the box to do it while the eu prevaricated hand-wringing about that because they couldn't agree could they? Um, but anyway, Anthony, thank you ever so much. Fascinating insight into the sort of things hostile states may be doing in this country.